folks, this is Johnny, and this video on the FP8 is going to be on setting up third-party effects with the FP8. So let's actually show you one more time how to actually get effects, the native effects, to show up on the fader port. So I'm going to just take this flanger, and I'm going to drag the flanger right into track one. And I have selected the track, track one, and I'm going to hit edit plugins. So now up here, you can't see it, but I'll do uh, a close-up view of this when we program our plugin, our third-party plugin. I'm going to, it shows here, and it says flanger, and I'm going to hit select. And now you saw all of the faders snap into all of the settings that are available here in the flanger. And I can turn up, there's my width. And then, uh, see this one, I believe this one's a button. Yeah, this is the sync button. This one is the speed. This one is the feedback, the delay, and the depth. So you can see I have total control. So now with third-party plugins, it's a little different because none of this is set up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just close this right now. And you see it automatically pops back to the fader positions for all of my tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and click track again so that we actually see where we're at. I'm going to select track two. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to grab a third-party plugin, and this is a little freebie uh, called Bittersweet, and I'm going to drag this in to track two. There we go. So now if I actually, since I got this selected, if I actually hit Edit Plugin and then select Bittersweet, all the faders go down because none of the controls are linked to the faders here. So, how do we set that up? It's easier than you might think. And the screen up here will totally update once we get all of this stuff configured, okay? So, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hook this up. So, this is the sweet and the bitter. This is the main knob for the whole plugin. And as I move this, I want you to keep an eye on this area right here. Make sure that you see both of these boxes when you have Studio One open. If you don't see the second box, that means you've got your resolution too low or you've got uh, Studio One in kind of a small view mode. So make sure that you have a nice high resolution or you have Studio One stretched out. All right, so again, I'm going to move the big flux knob right here and you see the amount actually moves this number one more time. Now, it is really simple. I'm just going to go in order, and I'm going to say, I want this knob, and I want this fader, and as I move this fader, you can see here the fader movement as I do this. You can see my value is actually changing here, all right? But it's not changing anything because it's not connected to anything yet. So let's just verify that the flux knob is in the first box, and it is, and my fader is in the second box. And also, you need to make sure that the plugin is actually selected, fader port. You need to make sure that it is gold like this or yellow. And this tells the plugin to be in focus mode. So that means you can open up many uh, instances of this plugin, and in focus mode, they can all have different settings in each of the tracks. Okay, just remember that needs to be lit up. So now all we need to do, now that we actually have the, f the fader right here, fader one, and then we have the amount in the plugin in, in the first box, I'm just going to click the little arrow. And now you can see it is controlling this. So let's go a little further with this, okay? Let's go ahead and set up this part here. And this is the mode. And you can see that when I move it, it changes the mode. And now I'm going to select the second fader, and I'm going to click its link. Boom. Now, when I move the fader, you can see this moving. All right, two down. The next one we're going to do is we're going to do this right here. Let me unlink this real quick. I'm going to, this is the output gain. So now you can link the output gain to the flux knob, and you see they both move together. Move it here, and you see they both move together. But I want to have the ability 
to move that by itself and unlink it. So now I'm going to click the link light here and I'm going to move this manually. And you see that it's moving the output gain right here. And now I'm going to move fader three. You see it's updated up here. And I'm going to hit link. So now I can move the output gain. And now you're wondering, hey, can I actually put this link button? Can I link it to a button? Yes, I can. As you can see, as I click it on and off, you see it shows up in the first window. And now I'm actually going to use one of the buttons. I'm going to say this button right here. So now button four is selected in the second box. Link gain is here, the, la uh, the latching link gain. Let me go ahead and do this. There you go, see? And now I'm going to click on this. And now, if I hit the button, look at that, the link goes on and off. Perfect. Okay, now that's actually all set. And that's going to take up this fader right here. Okay? All right, so now I'm actually going to see what else I've got here. I've got, oh, I've got this here. This is the period in milliseconds. And you can see it's already shown up right here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to the next fader, fader five, and I'm going to click the link button. Now that fader is there. Look at that, it's beautiful. All right, so now there's some other things that I can do here. I can actually hook up the bypass. And it looks like I, when I was doing testing, I already had it hooked up. But I'm gonna go, just going to go like this. Bypass. I'm going to click it a couple of times. And you see it It shows up here in the first box. And then I'm going to click this button. And it shows up in the second box. And I'm going to link them. Now when I press this button, I can bypass the plugin. And so on and so forth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how it can be different in different channels. And remember, this is important right here. I don't want to bypass right now. This is important to have when you open this effect to make sure that the fader port 8 is selected and that it's gold. Or it, on my screen, it's gold. I think it's just yellow. But that tells you that it's in focus mode. So you can have a dozen of these all over your song. And if they're all in focus mode, they can have all of their own settings that will correspond to the settings on the faders of the fader port 8. So I'm going to close this. Now you see it all goes back to normal because I don't have anything on. I, I also, I could have done that. I could have done that up here. I could have just gone back into track mode and would have taken me to the same place. So I'm going to just close this now. And now I'm going to drag in a new version of Bittersweet right here. And I'm going to select this channel. Okay. And now you can see that nothing, nothing's going on here. Okay. Nothing has changed. And if I go to this track, you can see it's, it's, it's right where I left it before. Okay. So now I am actually going to open up my editor. There we go. And now if I go to the different channels, you can actually see, I'm going to go to the first one. I'm going to set it up. And I'm going to turn the bypass on. But now if I go to the next track, the next channel right here, it has its own settings. I'm going to turn this down. And you see all the faders are moving. Everything's doing what I want it to do. And I'm moving it here so that you can see the faders move. But there we go. I can do that. I can go ahead and move that to stereo. I can actually go ahead and take the bypass and, turn, and make sure that it's off. And so now, using this wheel, I can select the different channels in my song or the different tracks in my song. And it is working perfectly with the flux. It, it holds it. It saves it as long as it's in focus mode. And you should be good now. I can insert the Bittersweet on a dozen different tracks. I can have full control over it uh, with the faders on the FP8. And I can have every track and every channel set differently for Bittersweet. So I can actually just drag this over here. Now I got the exact same effect on two tracks. But let's say I want to turn this all the way down. And I want to select, uh, and I want to select center. There we go. So now I have this on three tracks, and you can see they're all different. Or I can select it with the wheel. And see, there we go. There's the first plugin. Faders move to it, and I'll show you the close up here in a few seconds. And then turn it that way, and then turn it that way. And there we go. All of the different effects. You got a third-party plugin right here on three tracks, and then a native plugin on track one. 
and it all works. So now let me show you what the screen looks like. Okay, so what we have here now that you're seeing is you're now seeing what the uh, LCDs look like when you're selecting effects. I'm just going to take the wheel and I'm going to go through the tracks. This is track one. This is our native plugin. And you see all of our settings and this is how they look when you adjust them on the faders. Then here is the bittersweet on track two or channel two. And you can see that I can do that. And the buttons that I programmed, you can actually see it up here in the plugin all moving. Then I'm going to use the wheel again and go to the next channel. Or I can use the mouse, whichever I'm comfortable with. And now you can see I have a whole totally different set of adjustments here to make to the knob that I can do. And you can see it all update on the screen here. There we go. I just unlinked it. I turned it off and it's off here. So the condition of the button reflects the condition of the virtual button on the plugin. Just like that. And then the last one in the last channel, totally different settings. Same plugin, totally adjustable the way we want it. And that's what the screen looks like. So there you have it. There is the FP8 or the Fader Port 8 and setting up third-party effects. Now if you have a lot of effects and a lot of things that you want to get to work with the FP8, yeah, it's going to be kind of time-consuming to go through each of your plugins and to get things set up. If I were you, do what I did and actually set them up as you need them. It does not take long. You saw it was very simple to just use the uh, make sure that the software box is connected to the hardware box using the little arrow in the center. Make sure that your plugin is in focus mode. So make sure that whenever you have the plugin pulled up, that it the fader port 8 is selected and it is in focus mode so that everything keeps working. And it should be a breeze once you get them all set up. Studio One saves them. You can pull them up in any song and you should be good to go from there. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, this has been Third Party Plugins with the Fader Port 8. There are more videos coming, so please stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.